Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick live video because I saw that we just re reached um, 350 subscribers and hopefully this live video doesn't make some people unsubscribe, but I thought I'd do a quick video and talk about something that I just talked about last night. I gave a talk at a beekeeping association in New York and one thing that people had uh, a few questions about was uh, I mentioned that I uh, uh, don't use foundation in my beehive. So I thought I'd just do a quick video about foundationless beekeeping. And all right, so I don't use any kind of foundation in my hive and the deeps and the supers, uh, nowhere. And I did for the farms I used to work for. So I am familiar with how it works and the benefits of it. But when I had my own hives, I just didn't buy it because it didn't come with the frames I purchased and I made all the rest of my own equipment because shipping is so expensive here in Hawaii. I don't use any starter strips or wire or anything. I just put a plain frame into the beehive because I really am that lazy. Um, now, the reasons why I go foundationless and I still continue to do it that way, other than the fact that I'm cheap and lazy. I mean, I'm not really lazy, but if I don't have to do something, I won't. Is that I find that it's easier to not use foundation if you want to do some basic queen breeding and, you know, just, just breed a few queens because you're going to be making splits and maybe having like four or five queens would be helpful. When you... <laughs> so when you don't have foundation if you have a frame that has like two or three queen cells on it you can actually take like a sharp knife and cut out that queen cell and then go to your split that you made and you can just like smush in that queen cell into a frame of comb um in, into a brood frame and so that makes it easier here in hawaii we have an insanely high small hive beetle population and so if there is a section of your frame that looks a little slimy or you see some worms on you can cut that out and you don't have to pull the whole frame out and a big part of my mite uh, keeping mite levels low because my bees do not have the genetics to really deal with varroa mites on their own they just they just don't. And as far as I'm aware, there aren't treatment free beekeepers in the area that I can get queens from. So my hives aren't dealing with mites on their own very well. So what I do so that I don't have to put treatments in so often is I freeze my drone comb. And so if I see just a little section of drone comb on the frame, I'll cut that section of drone cells out once it's capped um, to help keep my levels low. Uh, and, you know, every time I put in a frame with foundation, even if it has, you know, that beeswax coating on it, they always build in the frames with nothing in them over the frames with foundation. They will eventually build off of the foundation, but it takes them a lot longer. And there, I found that it just has to be like a bigger flow. And then, oh my goodness, the flow high frames. I've really had trouble getting bees to to take to those frames. They, they will, but I put them on, luckily the hive I have at the hotel brings in a big honey harvest, really like all at once, all these trees are blooming. And that's really the only place I can get the bees to take to the flow high frames. Um, okay, the other reason, this isn't my reason, but some people don't use foundation because it lets the bees build the cells the size that they want them to. And uh, if you're not aware of this, I have a podcast called The Buzz About Bees, and I interviewed Michael Bush a few months ago, and he is like all about, he doesn't use treatments, and he's all about letting the bees build their own cell size because he says it will be smaller it will vary quite a bit but it'll also be smaller and those smaller cells mean the bees don't take as long to develop before they hatch and that shorter cycle um when they are in that development stage means the mites don't have as much time to lay their eggs and those eggs are going through a full life cycle in that cell feeding off of that pupating bee so the bee pupates for less time and the mites uh, uh cycle is being disturbed as well um uh, Maxwell says that he uses uh, for his row my top guard three and rotates with oxalic acid. You know, I used hop guard once 
well, no, a few times for the farm I used to work for is one of the few organic methods approved. So they would rotate hop guard and um, uh, formic acid, the mite away quick strips because they're certified by the USDA organic honey. And the hop guard was awful. I haven't used it in like five or six years maybe so uh, maybe it's it's better I, I hopefully they are improving it it was terrible and the bees just completely ignored a anywhere that i put those strips in um they just left the brood to die uh and so i um I let my bees build whatever cell size they want and he says that what you're supposed to do is um you strip down your frames a little bit so that they're they're narrower and with the narrower frames that um the bees will build even smaller cell sizes and that's the key to the treatment free beekeeping for him uh, but you know really if if something costs me more money <laughs> and it's a, like a piece of equipment i have to buy and it um the bees don't prefer it like i really just don't see the point to it the tricky part is is that if you are using an extractor because i do a lot of comb honey so i'm not using the extractor as much but if you are using an extractor especially somewhere where it's really warm out um and that the wax is a lot softer you're going to have to be really gentle with the um extracting those frames but uh, the other thing is, is that it's a lot easier to get the I mean, when you pull comb out of the hive, I can just throw that into my solar wax melter. And it's this little little drippings of wax in a few hours versus actually maybe more like a day versus um, if you have those strips, then you're scraping the um, comb off of those strips, which isn't always easy. I usually leave them out in the sun or something just to soften them up so that it's easier to strip it off. So if you're thinking about going foundationless, you know, you don't have to make like your whole beehive foundationless. You can just put in a few frames. You can put one frame in and see how it goes if you want. And you could put one box on or half a box, half a hive body with, you know, no foundation and just see what happens. A lot of people are afraid of the cross comb or burr comb and the, you know, all their frames getting all wacky. And, um, I I don't really have that problem. I make sure that the hive is, there's three things that I do. The hive has to be perfectly level or it could be, you know, like a degree facing um, towards the entrance if you have difficulty with, you know, it being a really rainy area and there being water that pulls up on the bottom board. You need the... Um, you need that B space. So if I have like nine frames in a 10 frame box, it's, you know, forget about it. They're going to, the comb's going to be all wacky. You need to have 10 frames in that 10 frame box. And I, um, you have that comb guide, like uh, in the comments, Swarmstead says, and for me, what I make my comb guide as, which um, I think it makes things a lot easier is I have a chest freezer. So after I'm extracting frames or I just have, you know, honey that I took off my hive um, because it's winter time and the hives get small and the small hive beetle population gets big. So you need to take frames off and I don't harvest them all. So I just have them stored up as feed honey when needed. And if I put an empty super on, I'll take frames from my chest freezer and I'll put a couple in there, like two or three, and I'll put empty frames in between those frames um, with the comb already drawn out. And it doesn't have to be like fully drawn out. It could just be, you know, that little, that little heart shaped piece of comb that's hanging from the top bar and that seems to be enough of a guide for the bees that they will um, build all of their frames straight across but it, and if you're putting a box on a hive that already has a super full of honey or drawn out comb you can take some frames from that box down below and throw them into your empty box and take some empty frames and put them down into that box already on your hive uh, or you can use wire or starters um, that little strip up at the top it could be beeswax foundation or popsicle sticks or just little shims that you, you dribble a little bit of beeswax on to get it to stay up in there and for the bees to be more inclined to want to build off of it the beeswax foundation you know you just cut a little piece and smoosh it up in there
Um, and uh, that really seems to be all you need. Uh, one question I did have was the one woman said that she tried it and she had a lot of drone comb in her hive without using the foundation to keep the hive to prevent them from making so many drones. And, you know, I don't really have a huge problem with that. But the thing is, is that now that I think about it, I think I just don't care that much <laughs> if my hives produce a lot of drones. And I think the more beehives you have, the less you care about things that aren't going to kill your hives. <laughs> And when it comes to like worrying about if you have too many drone cells in your hive, I think that's one of those things that beginners beekeepers care about or people that don't have a lot of hives care about more so because they only have one or two hives to look inside. I might be making too many assumptions about this woman. She might have 150 hives for all I know. But in my opinion, like if I open a hive and they have a strong population and they're more even more importantly, you know, harvesting honey and doing well and not overly aggressive and, you know, they have one and a half brood boxes. What does it matter if there's drone comb i mean they're going to build drone comb and that's good that's their nature too and maybe you're seeing more frames than you like of drone comb but if the pie has a good population if those two brood boxes are full of bees and you have bees in the other brood boxes and it's not full of drones but it's full of worker bees doing stuff and the hive is successful in like what you consider a successful hive I don't see how it matters about this other stuff if you're seeing drone comb and I mean drone comb once it's tapped that's good for me I pull it out and I freeze it the more I kind of see it as if a hive is building a lot of drone comb either they're really all about getting their DNA out there or they have a varroa mite problem and they know that the mites are attracted to the drone cells and they will almost use the drones as bait because isn't it better for the varroa mites to be feeding off of the drone pupa and then the bees being able to pull that drone pupa out. If that drone then is to hatch and isn't you know doing that well, has deformed wings and stuff, it doesn't matter that much to the hive the way it would if the varroa mites were feeding off of worker bees. So, um, so Maxwell says that he was in Southwest Florida and it's pretty hot, which causes the comb to fall off the top bars. It's difficult to go foundationless. You're trying to inspect relatively quick. Hmm, that's interesting. I, um, I mean, yeah, you could use wire and that would prevent that altogether. It does get pretty hot here, but I don't think it gets anywhere near as hot as it does in Southern Florida because even down by the, the beach, I have some hives. It's considered a semi-arid desert, but I still think it's only getting into like the low 90s. Um, there, you do have to be careful sometimes. Sometimes I... I will occasionally have a frame that they don't build enough on the bottom bar and they build too, the, the comb is heavy, but they haven't connected it to the bottom. Most of the time they do a good job of connecting it to the bottom before they fill it up so that it gets to be to the point that it's too heavy. But I have had a few frames where the comb's fallen off because I was harvesting and I left them leaning against the beehive and the sun was beating on them. And then they got really hot and they all just like slid off the frame into the grass. Um, and I was kicking myself because I was trying to sell those for 120 bucks a piece <laughs> and they all just turned to mush. But you know, that's interesting. So yeah, if you live in a climate that's like really in those southern states, you might have a problem with um, it, it being too hot. You really do need to be careful with twisting the frame. Oh, yeah, no. Ugh, I can't. I can't use top bars. <laughs> I started beekeeping with top bar hives. And if you use a top bar hive, 
it has to be a long Langstroth, in my opinion, because you can put Langstroth style four sided frames into a box. I don't understand where the concept of this top bar hive that's almost like shaped like a triangle came from or like a horse trough. I was building one in my parents' garage and my neighbor asked me if it was a child's coffin. <laughs> um, so yeah, when it comes to like a top bar high frame, those will fall off really easily. And then you're definitely not a beginner beekeeper. Um, hive style, in my opinion, it makes beekeeping really difficult, even if it's not that hot out. Um, I was talking to one beekeeper. He says he has to go out in the early morning before it gets hot in the summertime or else the comb will just fall off the top bars. And in my opinion, that is too complicated. That's too much for me. If, if I can just run out to the beehive when I want to, then I'm not going to go with that hive style. It comes from natural log shapes. Yeah, I guess... I'm sure eventually at some point it did, but come on, it's, it's been around long enough that I feel like we should just get rid of the sloped sides to top bar highs and whoever's building them. It just makes beekeeping so much more difficult in, in my opinion. Um, but I haven't kept one since those first two years with uh, the bees. I, I've only been using live straws sin, since. <laughs> um but yeah if you do deal with a lot of a, a lot of hot weather you can put um in the wire the wire i have never tried putting the wire in because it looks like way too much work for me but the farm i used to work for has some frames with wire in it uh, instead of the plastic and i mean they're putting it in a huge extractor that extracts about 100 frames at a time and um nobody uh and and it doesn't really have any problems it works just as well as the plastic foundation but if you want to you know harvest comb honey then the wire is not really for you you're going to have to use the starter strips and just be careful when you're inspecting if it's really hot out so um thanks for the comments guys and for watching and thanks to the people watching i am um, now 350 subscribers which is fun and makes uh it a little bit more fun to read the comments and stuff and um i started giving some talks at beekeeping associations so if you belong to one and are looking for people to talk about stuff and the three talks i've been giving is how to do comb honey um the um beekeeping in hawaii because it's a uh, very kind of very different climate and different issues than most people have around the United States and the um, crafts behind beekeeping, like the candles and lotions and beeswax wraps and rendering wax and stuff. So I uh, offer it for free in exchange for people putting links to my website on their beekeeping association website, because all that stuff really helps a lot. Um, so to all of you beekeepers out there, I am so jealous that you have a break throughout the entire winter. Um, Maxwell says, I only use the wire and starter strips in my brood box, triple dipped wax coated black acorn town foundation for my deep supers. And why is that? Is um, what's the What's the benefit to that? I have no idea what black acorn foundation is. <laughs> I'm so out of like the foundation talk. I know so little about it. Well, I'll have to talk to him directly because I don't want to stretch out the video too long. So thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. Have a happy Tuesday. <laughs>